Okay, so we're going to try and uh, fix him up and uh, we'll just proceed with the first one. Perfect. Okay, so we're hearing HMA 2201 for 313 Osborne Street in Hamilton. And we have the agent for the file, Nick DeFilippis, on the line. Uncle Nick, what's the scoop? You read the creepy comments? Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and committee. Um, yeah, I mean, I've looked at the, uh, I think this is a, a tabled uh, application and we provided the additional information that the, that the planning department was looking for, the elevations of the, of the proposed addition. I think they seem to be happy with all our variances. So I, I have no issue with, uh, as is, I'm here to answer any questions the committee has it. I don't think, I don't know if there's any neighbors or not. I don't think there are. Questions, motion? I'll move. Second it. So we have Mel and Laverne. Yep, all in favor? Opposed? None. Terry. Thank you very much. I'll see you in 20 minutes. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Camera keeps going under. Okay. Um, so what's Okay, so I am just looking for our next item, which is Sadie, but I don't see her. Okay, let's see. Okay, so I don't see Sadie on uh, as attendee. Um, did we want to wait and see if she goes on or did she want to uh, proceed without her? From what I can see, it looks relatively straightforward. Does anyone feel they need to speak to her? Oh boy. Uh, 
Hmm? No, do we want to call the hearing? I'm okay with that. I, yeah, I'm okay with yeah. this one. Okay. Uh, so we'll hear HMA 2244 for 209 Manning Avenue. And uh, we have, uh, we do not have the agent for the file on the line, um, but we did have uh, her registered. Um, I'm prepared to move it. Okay, seconder, please. Uh, we have Nancy. I'll second it. Favor. Okay. Opposed? I already did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Um, so yes, Bob has declared conflict of interest on all Ward 7 uh, files, so he is not in the room at present. Um, so we have Okay, and for the next file, we have agent. Owner. Yeah. <laughs> I see Gray in there. Yes. Want to start? Okay, so we have so we um, have um, <laughs> okay. So uh, for the next file, we have uh, the agent and owner registered, and then we have uh, an interested party who is just um, attempting to connect, I believe. Um, don't see her currently on. Um, so we can call that and that hopefully she can join. Okay, you guys okay. have to keep you yourselves on mute when I mute you. Thank you. Okay, okay so, so we're calling, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say we're calling HMA 2246 for 220 East 8th Street in Hamilton. Okay, so I have the application. I have the comments which seem favorable. However, I had a letter of concern from a Deborah Bentley of uh, 222 East 8th worrying about um, snow and various other issues that are sort of in the letter. Mr. Day, did you see this letter? Is there anything you want to say? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we've acknowledged the neighbor's uh, concerns and we've been in uh, talks with Michael, the homeowner, and I believe he's relayed the information onto her. Um, just a few points of what she said. Uh, she believes the resale value uh, may uh, impact if she decides to move. Uh, we believe that it could potentially increase the property value as it shows signs of a growing neighborhood. Um, and it would entice more people to kind of move there. Um, as for the space between the houses, um, it's already tight and we're not reducing anything in this manner. Um, the existing space would remain as is. So whatever work that would be required in this area would not be changed. Um, and then she brings up the point about rain overflow or snow. Um, we, uh, brought up the point that we're lessening the roof slope um, and removing the existing one on that side. So it actually should reduce the amount of overflow, should there be any. Um, if any, there's be, there'd be more right now and it could go onto either one of them, um, should there be any uh, free grain storms. Um, and then as for parking, I don't believe there should be an issue here as we're not altering anything on the ground floor that would take away from the area of parking existing. It's just more of a formality right now. Okay, 
Thank you. Yeah, that's all. Party on the grid there, Jamila. Jamila. Sorry, I muted myself. I muted myself. Okay. So. <laughs> Uh, yes. Okay. So no, I don't see um, her on the line. Um, it was uh, Deborah Bentley as well, um, but I do not see her. Uh, well, we have her letter. We have her points. The they were addressed. The committee can ask questions at this point if they wish. I move move the motion. Okay. Make a, a motion to approve. Yep. Seconder. I second that. Okay. All in favor. Opposed? Any? None. Application approved. Hearing adjourned. I just have a question, um, Jamila. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a um, another hearing this afternoon uh, for, um, I believe it's HM. Sorry, twenty twenty two three four for eighteen Morton Street. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was just wondering if we could. Uh, I sent an email in earlier asking if we can table the, the application. I don't know if we can do that now. We have to pay. And what time? That the one is 4 one. 3 last 3 15. One. 3 15. Okay. Last one. Last one. Okay, so, uh, so, so that you don't have to stick around, we'll make a note of that that you want to table and bring it up at the time of uh, calling the application. Please. Thank you. That'd be great. No okay, thank you, everyone. Yeah, bye -bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Can you hear me? Come object, Camilla. Yeah, I I can hear you, but um, for some reason I can't make you a panelist, so we won't be able to see your video. Right, I just the video is different than it's been in past weeks. I just got a strip across the bottom of my screen rather than a, a you know rectangular thing with all the pictures in it. I don't know yeah. what's happened today. The logging yeah, so in was a, an exercise. Yep. So I had said we were going to try out something new. So we'll um, we'll work with you. Uh, please don't. <laughs> yeah. So we'll work with you a bit later. So just keep in mind that I won't be able to um, mute you um, because I won't be able to see when you're voting. So I'm just going to have to call you uh, when you when you do vote. Okay. So I I've unmuted myself here. I guess. No. So I unmuted you. Oh, so you knew I was trying to get hold of you. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to leave you unmuted. Oh dear. Um, okay. Because of our technical difficulties. So yeah. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Okay. All right. That was just the first item on the agenda, wasn't it, Osborne? Uh, no, that was the first three items. First three items. Yep. Oh my. So okay, where where are you going now? So we are at HMB 2079 for 199 and a half Stone Church Road West, Hamilton. Got it. Okay. Okay. And uh, we have the owner registered to speak for this one. Hello? Okay, let's call. You ready to go? Yes. Get your name for the record, please. Uh, it's Mario Sino. And Dominic Cirapelli. Oh, okay. Comments seem to be pretty good. Did you read the comments? Are you okay with what you read? Uh, uh, yes, we're okay with it. It's just more of a realignment, and we spoke to Sam Brush as well, so we're good with everything. Good. Okay, move it. Buddy? <laughs> move it. Move it. Second. 
Okay, Bob, all in favor? Opposed? I'm in, I'm in favor. Okay, Terry. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, rolling. Perfect. So we're right on time. Okay. So uh, I'm all set if everybody else is. Yep. Okay. So we're hearing HM, oh, sorry, no, SCB 2074 for 185 Federal Street. And uh, SCB 2075 for 187 Federal Street. Do we want to do one property and then the next one, or did you want to do them together? Together. Together. Okay. Together. All right. And we have uh, the agent, uh, Nick DePhillipus, on the line again for this one. Hey, Nick, oh. you read the comments. What do you think? Uh, yes, thank you. Yeah, this is basically a. Uh, a reapplication for an application that had previously lapsed. Uh, we had gotten our committee adjustment approvals previously, and they're still they still stand. Unfortunately, the application lapsed due to some technical difficulties, but uh, we're okay with it. I mean, I think the conditions are similar to what we originally had, and I don't think there's any issue to, as to what is being asked for. They're recognizing that we already had a consent agreement. We just got to update it. I guess the new the new plan or the new uh, file numbers. And, and continue on from there. Okay, anybody? Uh, we have Nancy and then we have Dale. You have a question? Um, uh, yeah, I have a couple of, uh, well, I'd like to discuss the comments from the neighbor. Uh, they have some pretty strong uh, messages in their letters. So I wonder if Nick could uh, address that concern from the neighbor. Do I have them somewhere? I don't know, you should have. I don't see them in my package. Okay. They would have been sent in the comments package, I believe. Yeah. Is that the tree issue, Nancy? No, this is the neighbors in the yeah. rear at 30 Blenheim. 30 Blenheim, um, yeah. Yeah. I've got quite a, quite a number of concerns. Uh, some of them are probably going to be taken care of. But yes, there were trees. There were trees that were taken down once they were agreed that they weren't going to be taken down. Um, there were some concerns. Oh, some sorry. Concerns I see here now. There was, somebody mark mcgee or something yeah yes okay i'm sorry i must have missed this in the, in the thing it got stable to my other application because i had two at once okay they say the trees okay. you took down were on their property uh, i'm not aware of it i mean unless the owner did but i don't think he would have tore down taken down something that was not on his property uh well, it was on their on your side of the fence but that's to, but still within their property line they say well, there are our side of the fence there are trees i think where the, the, the fence i take it is not on the property line i don't think hey, i'm not guys, sure and i am not disagreeing or agreeing with you i apologize but guys, i know that these are dry stores excuse me guys sorry i think they're concerned about what has gone on about trees about not cutting the grass gunk nests etc which is something that should definitely be brought to the attention of the homeowners but these aren't really arguments against doing what they're doing no no nope. something afterwards just wanted to make sure that they do have a some communication yeah. with the neighbors so that it doesn't get into something ugly that's oh, and that's fine i appreciate that i'll make sure that the owner's made aware of it and uh, as far as okay. repair, i mean because this thing got all in limbo last i think what really ruined hurt the the, the lapsing of the first application because everything was done is because they made the yeah. the the uh, condition that the the dwelling had to be demolished as part of the condition of consent and unfortunately they can't issue the building permits for the new dwelling unless a demolition permit is issued or you can't issue a demolition permit if you can't issue a uh, issue a, a building permit because the consent wasn't created yet so that's what started all the issues and that's what happened that the application ended up collapsing almost on the last day because the demolition hadn't occurred yet. Uh, like, I, unfortunately, I don't know, it's, I know it's a cart before the horse, but I don't know why 
building department continually run writes these conditions that way. I mean, you can't sever and, and you can't build uh, two units on, on a single lot, but then you can't, uh, it, so they can't issue the building permit, but then you can't issue the building permit if you don't issue the demo permit. And they can't issue the demo permit if you don't have the building permit issue. So it's sort of, <laughs> it, it just makes it very difficult. There's already securities put in place to ensure that. And unfortunately they still insist on, on, on this cart before the horse thing or chicken and egg, whatever you want to call it, at the last second. Okay, so, and we still have a question from Dale. Ahead, yeah, Dale. so I'm, I'm a little confused as to some of the comments, you know, when they, they say the regular lots uh, in this area with frontage similar to the subject lands, and then later on they say the lots are similar shape and size. But when I look at the picture that we have or the map, the 185 and the 187, and you split them in half, uh, that's setting a lot different precedents than what's in that area. I just, uh, I just have a concern with, with what we're starting on this street um, that hasn't been addressed before now. Uh, can I, do you want me to respond or do you want to go through someone first? Go ahead. Okay, so they are similar lots and, and, and the, the duplexes are permitted on by zoning. It's not something that we're that we're uh, asking for a rezoning application on, uh, and they are, they're very similar lots as is. And I don't think this is a, a a start of anything. There are several several properties on those in that whole corridor there. They're already duplexes. All they're trying to do is create separate ownership for each of the two duplexes. So you mean a, you mean semi-detached, don't you? Well, semi-detached. A duplex can be. Oh, I know. But in our case, it's going to be vertically or horizontally. Sorry, whatever way you want to call it. Up and down, okay. so it, it, there's lots of them. There's, this is just trying to. This is the consent is necessary to create, not to build it, but to create a, a separate title and ownership. It won't change the use, and it won't change how the property uh, functions, other than each each person is a, is an owner instead of a tenant. Which I think is but right uh, now. There's one house on. Right now, the there's one house on 185 and one house on 187. Exactly. And so you're basically doubling the living space on those yeah, but two it, lots. It's, it's, a, it's not a zoning, the zoning permits duplexes on the same size property. All we're doing is create, if this had been stayed as one property, we could build the exact same building and just that you have a rental situation. This way we're having an ownership situation, which is always better for the neighbors and, or for, and for anybody concerned because you're, you're an owner instead of a tenant. Well, I, 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 you've lost me now, Tom Lovchik. Uh If there's a house on each of the lots, 185 and 189, you couldn't build what you want to build, even as a rental situation. Yes, we could. You, how, how can you have two, four, four residences on two lots? Because the zoning permits, the zoning permits a duplex on each of these two lots. So you have two and two. Yeah, but the, the zoning also provides, I, I assume, one, one single family residence per lot, period. No, it allows for single du and duplex. This has multiple uses. Uh, I can get the zoning. I don't have it in front of me, but I can get it in a minute. Well, I, 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 so I get our zone here. I'm surprised that, that that's what it, what it is, and I'm not going to argue with you because I, I don't know, but I would have thought it would be one residence per lot. And now you're going to have two residences per lot. No, it can be two residents per lot. Uh, here. I mean, without the, without the severance, you'd have two residences per lot if you're Just putting a, up a... Be owned by one individual instead of two, but it'd be the exact same building. How many I, I, units are in those houses now? Well, they're, they're derelict houses are one each. But there's many... One each. Very, there's many that are duplexes already and also semis and, and singles. Yeah, but the duplex, do the duplexes share a lot with a single family residence? What do you mean, do they share? That's what you're proposing. With, with, that's what you'd have without the severance. No, I could tear down the existing house anytime and build it. Oh, all right. Yes. Yeah, yeah you could do that. Sure, yeah. you could do that. Or I could convert the existing into two if, if it was physically possible. 
Uh, we have a question from Nancy. Just, I'm still confused, Nick. So <laughs> right now, this application is to sever the two lots. Even the green I don't on see, green. I don't see anything on here about changing these from single family to family homes. We're, we're not, there is isn't because it's not it's already permitted by the zoning. We're not changing, we're not asking for that. It's not part it's of permitted the permitted by the zoning, but do the houses qualify based on parking, based on lot size, based on square meters? Right. And we've already had all those if there was any variances of that effect, they were all done previously and approved. But the, the duplex okay. has to be on, uh, on a single lot. What you're what you're doing now is creating an extra lot. By the two severances, you're you're turning two lots into three. No, two lots into four. But we're not putting a duplex on each quarter. If that's what you're asking. No. So no. so uh, sorry for the purposes. I believe um and uh. Sarah could uh, clarify this. Uh, I believe this might be her file, um, but. A duplex is one unit on top of another unit right. and semi-detached is one unit beside another unit. So this is not a proposed duplex. It's a proposed semi-detached with one half of each semi-detached on each lot. Each half. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That, that definition puts some sense into the whole thing. So what you're doing is you're creating an extra lot with two semi-detached residences on it. No, we're not creating, no, we're just creating, basically, if you think of the semi-detached dwelling with, with a common oh, wall. No, oh, no wait, wait, wait a minute now. Right. You're, you're going to have 185 with a house. That's one lot. You got 189 with a house. That's two lots. And then you're 187 with the duplexes. That's three lots. So you're making three lots out of two. Now I'm lost. <laughs> no. 189 isn't involved in it. Yeah. So the zoning, and I have the zoning in front of me now for R6, which is what it is in Stony Creek. That so the permitted use on a lot in, in that area is a single detached dwelling, a semi-detached dwelling, and a duplex. So that's is not a, any, any registered lot in that subdivision. It's not a duplex. Uh, we, I think we've just been no, no, told that it's not a duplex, it's a semi-detached. No, no, I'm giving you this. And, and 189 is involved because you're hiving off part of 189 and part of 185 Sorry, to create no. 187. No, no? Wrong, wrong, wrong. 187 is a separate lot. We own, my client owns 187 and 185, nothing to do with 189. All right, so 187 is a separate lot now. Is that right? Currently, yes. And, and anything on it? Yeah, single family house. Oh, I, all, all right, house. okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I've, I've, I've misunderstood. I'm looking at the diagram here that this the staff have prepared it. I, looked, I thought you were hiving off part of 185 and 189 to create a lot, but no. it is a lot that you just want to put a, a duplex on now instead of a single family residence. A semi, I guess. <laughs> a semi. Oh, oh, so you're oh, right, a semi, semi detached, yes. Okay. And, and, all right, so. This was all approved and ready to go and then unfortunately it lapsed because of technicality with the demolition permit. Okay, so, so if I could chime in for a sec. This was already approved. Staff doesn't have a problem with it. It fits within the plan and the bylaw. The neighbor has some legitimate concerns, but not concerning what they're permitted to put on it just for the way it's been dealt with, which they should be brought to their attention, but it's nothing to do with the nature of the application. So I don't think there's really much more to bang around on this, Bob. I'll move it. Okay, seconder. I'll second. All in favor? Opposed? I'm in favor. Thank you. Okay, and that just to cl uh, clarify for the record, so that was um, for both files. So that was for 185 and 187. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Have a good day. Please and keep this thing nice.
Okay, um, I'm all set for the next one, whenever you are. Go for it. All right, so we're hearing SCA 2231-4869 Barton Street in Stony Creek. And we have uh, the agents and owners registered and one interested party as well. Okay, who's speaking on behalf of this application? Uh, that'll be myself, Joseph Abella, and our uh, senior landscape architect, Eric Weckers, is here as well, if we need additional uh, commentary. Okay, before we start, is the interested party online? Yep. Okay, your name and address? Gary Mackay, 853 Arvin Avenue. Okay, and did you have a concern or something you wanted to say to the committee? Yes, yeah, we, can, uh, can we ask it now? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so our main concern, it's not nothing to do with the construction necessarily, but looking at the drawings, we understand that there's going to be an entrance and exit to this facility uh, on Arvin Avenue, right across from our building. And our main question is, is Arvin Avenue ever going to be extended? Because we see a major traffic inflow that will cause some safety concerns. Just the... Obviously, there's a few hundred parking spots of, you know, Amazon delivery people coming in and out daily. Um, and with our traffic flows coming in and out, uh, with one entrance to Arvin Avenue where we're located, we just feel that there, it'd be great if it could be further extended to connect to Jones Road. That's about 200 meters away. Yeah, oh, yeah. I see that on the map. Okay, if you've finished your comments, I'll ask the applicant what their take is on what you asked and see if the staff has any comments. Do you have anything okay. more to say, sir? Uh, no, nope. that's everything. Okay, applicant, uh, Mr. Abella, do you know anything about what he just said, particularly in terms of hooking up with Jones off Arvin? Do you know anything based on what your research has done? No, from our from our extensive work with the planning department and engineering staff at the city, we've already undergone a majority of an SPA process for this application. Um, and there were no concerns from city staff in regards to the traffic generation on Arvin. Um, I can speak briefly to the, the nature of how the facility will operate. Um, in terms of tractor trailer traffic in and out of the property, that will only occur overnight. Um, beyond 10 p.m. Um, before 3 a.m. So there'll be no tractor trailer, significantly no tractor trailer traffic entering the property during the daytime hours, or I'm assuming um, the neighbor's operational hours. Uh, and during the day, the only activity on and off Arvin will be delivery vans, um, and they are phased uh, in batches. So there is not a heavy volume um, all at once entering onto Arvin. Um, so based on the, the traffic analysis we reviewed at the city during the SPA, um, there was no concerns raised based on uh, a volume of traffic onto Arvin. Uh, and then all associate traffic in terms of pedestrian vehicles entering the site all occurs off Barton. So that will not occur off Arvin. So Ar Arvin will be mainly delivery vans during the day, like I said, dispatching in waves, um, and then tractor trailer uh, loading vehicles coming into the site. But again, over late evening, early morning, so it shouldn't affect neighboring properties. Okay, do you know if they're ever going to hook up to Jones? Uh, I've, I have not heard any discussions regarding that, no. Okay. Any questions from the committee? I have Nancy. Go ahead, um, yes, thank you. There was a comment uh, from somewhere along here about uh, conservation authority approval, and I don't see any comments from them. Should we be concerned about that? Uh, no, so I can speak to that as well. So the, the conservation authority has been circulated on our site plan approval process. Um, they've approved the site plan application as well. We've submitted for a separate fill permit with the conservation authority, um, which has already been approved and released. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Sure. Motion for approval, seconder. I have burn. Opposed okay. none. Carried. Hearings adjourned. Applicant and interested party will get a copy of the decision in the mail. Thank you all very much. Excellent. Thank you, everyone.
Okay, and I'm all set for the next one whenever you are. Ready. Okay, so we're hearing SCB 2078 and SCA uh, 2248 for 32 Trillium Avenue in Stony Creek. And we have uh, the agent, uh, Jim, registered to speak. Hey, Jim, are you online there? Jim? I can. Hello? Jim? Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so you have comments for one of the applications for the severance, and you have a comments for the variances. It appears on the variance application there's some concerns and the staff doesn't recommend it and recommend it be denied. What would you like to say to us? You will be above. Um, do we want to talk about one file uh, first or, or both kind of simultaneously here? Whatever you think is most effective for your position. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's, let's uh, take a look at uh, 2078, I guess. Uh, to me, it seems uh, pretty straightforward. We're kind of doing a lot line adjustment on that. Yep. Uh, from most of the comments uh, from staff uh, that we've had recently and in the past through our inquiries, I think uh, that we don't have any further comments on and we're ready to proceed on. Yep, that one looks fine. It's the next one, the variances. That, that... Okay, the variances uh, is a little bit uh, puzzling to me. Uh, we have talked to three other planners prior to getting the comments that we've recently received uh, in order to prepare for this. We've been dealing with this now for over a year and a half ourselves. And at no point has any planner rejected and or put comments that they would not support the variances that we put in place. So I'm a little bit at, uh, at a loss as to why these comments were made like this when we haven't received anything like that up until today or two days ago when we saw the comments. I'm not sure if uh, the rest of the committee has questions in particular to the file that I could answer, but. Uh, Tom Loftick here, you've gone ahead building the garage already, have you not? Uh, well, no, we haven't built anything. Uh, what you're probably looking at is a uh, video or sorry, a picture from uh, Google Earth that was yes. done maybe, I don't know, seven, eight years ago by the previous homeowner. Who was building a garage without permission? Who was building a garage without permission. I see, okay. Correct. <laughs> uh, we, we inquired about that uh, during this process. Uh, we obviously started with the uh, building department. Uh, we asked as to, you know, what happened, what, you know, what, what transpired after the fact. We were told at the time that uh, if you wanted to keep the... Uh, so-called addition and or uh, garage. I think it's simultaneously both. All he had to do was to go through the procedures that we're going through right now, and he was able to keep it up. Uh, but instead of paying all the fees, he decided to just uh, simply tear it down. Um, but that's all I know based on the information that I got from the building department. Andrew, uh, we have uh, staff wishing to speak as well. Go ahead. Yes, hello. I just wanted to advise with regards to the consent application. Uh, in preparation um, for my comments, I had um, I was under the impression that um, the there was going to be a road widening uh, for Trillium Avenue that was recommended, um, and now I see that uh, that that has not been recommended. And so, um, if the committee were to approve the consent, I would just ask that they would attach a condition for an access easement to be registered on title in favor of 32 Trillium Avenue so that they can access that driveway over the private property. Oh. Any comments? So is what I am hearing that the reason the staff recommended against it is now no longer exists is am i taking that correctly from from based on what i said no 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 i was just adding i was just recommending that a condition be attached to any approval of the consent because i didn't have it in my formal comments because i was 
under a different impression. I thought that the land right in front of right in front of that um, in front of the dwelling, um, that first chunk that's abutting Trillium Avenue, I thought that that was going to be dedicated to the road, and therefore they wouldn't they would just be accessing their um, driveway or garage from the road rather than from the private lands of the abutting landowner. Right. So the staff is still recommending against. Yes, it's just yes. We we had to we had to recommend against on the minor variance decision or on the minor variance application rather. Okay, applicant, anything you wish to say? Uh, yeah, like I said, so based on the planners that we've spoke to on three different occasions, this would be the first that we've had an indication that anybody would be against this. Um, as far as the property, it's actually zoned rural residential. Um, however, there isn't a single lot on this street that is conforming to any sort of regulation under rural residential. Uh, the lots vary in sizes from 100 feet down to 30 foot. Uh, not a single home on the property. Uh, is uh, in conformance of all the uh, zoning requirements. Uh, in fact, the actual home that's there now and all the homes that are beside it all have to be uh, or need to apply for minor variants in order to uh, be built, constructed, renovated, and so on and so forth. Much like the, uh, the current uh, application that we have. Uh, we have Dale wishing to speak. So I guess the question here is whether you want to table this and try and come back with some more favorable right. measurements. Um, because it looks here that, uh, you know, you're too close to the to the street. Um, the front yard setback is, is too... The, the, the point is, and this is something that we've reviewed with the previous planner before we applied for this, every single home on the street is in the exact same position. So when when we were looking at it, we did we did look at, at the context and um, so the you've got maybe you know it looks like it, by adding that addition in the front, it's really increasing the it's exacerbating that ex, that existing condition of that really sh reduced front yard. And if you look across the street, the other ones there are some that are right up against as yours is, and there are others that are back further, and a lot of them have the. Um, the driveway that you can actually, you know, you can park, park the car back a bit. So, I mean, it's, I mean, like you say, it's the, the other um, dwellings along the street, the other lots are out of conformity as well. But looking at it in context, it looked like more than anything else. And it just didn't really respect the, um, that, that form of the, the dwelling on the, um, on the east side. Um, and it just, uh, that's why we we had. I mean, you can see from the comments, I suppose, that that's was the difficulty. Yeah. Um, this, okay. Would this is where. Sorry, I would recommend to table because, like you said, you've spoken with three other people, but um, you know, my I talked to my my senior project manager about it, and so this was this was what we felt was appropriate. But if you've had other discussions, then you know it might be in your interest to table it to to further those discussions. Um, by all means, if a decision needs to be made and it's going to be unfavorable to us, then we would recommend that uh, I would agree that we would table it. Um, I, I suppose that would be the case. I just I, I want to just further on that that I, I'm not sure if everybody else has gone on the street and physically looked at what's there. Like even some of the comments that you guys have made about the neighbors to the east, every single home that's on that street. Uh, doesn't conform, number one. Number two, yours talks about there being bungalows beside me where there's only two stories. So I'm not sure if perhaps whoever reviewed this was actually looking at a different file or a different street. Well, I, I, Tom Lofchick, I've looked at the street on Google and I guess what I saw was, was aged because it had this big honking garage sitting out in front. Yeah. Correct. Or, or at the side of the house. If, if you're duplicating that, then it does look different than the rest of the street uh, in my view what what we're proposing would look like if if you are on google earth uh if you take a look at uh lot number or municipal number 28 or 26 
uh, we would be duplicating that scenario, which is two doors down. And contrary to the comments that were made, every single one of these properties is parking on municipal lands as opposed to their own lands. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a mess up and down the street. Sorry, uh, Dale, could you repeat that? Uh, just a question to the chairman: Are we voting on this or are we tabling it? That's what I wanted to do, but then uh, we got a discussion started. Again. Well, we got to make a motion for tabling. So, uh, just to clarify, are we going to hear them both together, or are we going to do them separately? I think it's probably best just to table them both in case something changes, and then we'll hear it. I agree. Uh, the um, hopefully amended comments. Like it doesn't look yeah. horrible, but I mean, it's a little confusing and I can just see this going south. So probably best to table it. Can I have a motion? Yeah. So we have Nancy and seconded by David. David, this is near where you live, isn't it? Sorry, what's the motion? To table. To table. Tabling on both, yes. Okay, application tabled. Have a few discussions, bring it back, and hopefully it all goes smooth. Hearing adjourned. Okay, Sorry, thank you. Uh, Bob, Bob, did you have a question? You were just voting in favor? Okay, thank you. Truly in Stony Creek. Is that near you, David? David on the He's gone. Oh, I'm having a sleep. <laughs> <laughs> he just turned his camera off. Um, okay. Well, next one looks like a true minor variance to me. Twenty six instead of twenty nine. But I'm sure, we can muddy it up somehow. <laughs> okay i'm ready whenever you are mr chairman yep. all right so we are hearing ana 2245 for 69 to 105 beasley grove and ancaster and we have the agent uh steve frazier on the line Steve. good afternoon mr chairman members of committee how are we good four meters i'm good, good. Yeah, a little a little mistake happened in the depth of those lots. Yeah, you read the comments. You're okay. I'm fine with them, Mr. Chairman. Happy to answer any questions. Hey, Nancy. Okay. Nancy and Mel. Favor. Opposed. Carried. Thank you. Take care. Little mistake. Oh, sorry. Yes, Sarah. Yes, Sarah. Oh, I'm just saying bye. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay, and we are hearing FLA 2238 for 217 Mill Street North in Flamborough. And we have the agent and owner uh, on the line to speak. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. This is uh, Jeff Markoviak. I'm the agent. Hi, Jeff. Is it Hi. just a fluke that you're the agent on behalf of someone with the same name? Uh, no, not with that last name. Okay, comments seem pretty good. Does the committee have any questions or concerns? Other than uh, the engineering part? Sorry, I was going to say yes. I mean, we're supportive of the planning comments, not so much the engineering comments. <laughs> right. Um, refusal of a variance over a technical concern that has a number of options that can be used to address it seems to be a bit extreme. So we would ask that the committee just um, defer to planning's comments and support the approval of the variances. Okay, questions from the committee? Um, 
Yep, we have Margaret. Um, Go ahead, Margaret. The, the development engineering continues on with their, their um, comments and say that if it's granted that they would like a condition that um, they provide, the applicant provides a grading plan satisfactory to manager of development approvals. Could we approve it on the basis of that condition? How does the applicant feel about that? From our perspective, I mean, it would be our preference that the decision not be conditional, but um, if the committee shared the engineering department's concern that there may be drainage concerns, uh, you know, a condition upon a grading, a grading plan, um, we wouldn't be opposed to it. Okay. Anybody else? Move it with condition. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, okay, so that's Nancy and seconded by Margaret. Mm -hmm. This on a grading plan. Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Very. Hearings adjourned. Application approved with condition. Thank you, everyone. Okay, bye bye. And uh, Thomas, were you in favor of that? Yeah, I just assume I'm in favor Thanks. unless I tell you otherwise. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I will do that. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, and we are all set for the next one. So we have SCA 2158 for 102 King Street West in Stony Creek. And we have the agent, Jared Marcus, on the line. There, Jared. Good afternoon. How are you? Good. Have you Good read the long and protracted comments <laughs> done on this? Uh, I have. I have, and I have a couple things I'd like to say, if I may. Go ahead. Um, so there was a recommendation for refusal of uh, variance three, which was the medical parking ratio reduction. And we, uh, we do not have any problems with that. Uh, it's, we're not proposing the, the larger unit size anymore. So it's just a technical wow. issue with what was shown on the drawing. So we're... We don't have any concerns with that recommendation. Uh, there was a recommendation that an archeological assessment be done on the property, which we've asked staff to remove, given that this site has been uh, almost 100% disturbed for quite some time. That uh, doesn't make sense, uh, given that uh, the historical use was uh, has been largely paved over on the entire property. So the site plan would have a uh, an undertaking clause in case something is found, which is standard procedure. And then... Note for the archaeological and you're withdrawing variance number three. Uh, yeah, I Hello? just want to make sure we withdraw the right variance. Because <laughs> there's a couple different threes, I think. You better look. Uh, so that was oh. very... Um, where did it go? Variance three... Um, variance number three under property A, uh, variances to Hamilton zoning bylaw prior to bylaw 17240. The variance was for the maximum uh, medical establishment. Or actually, it might be just establishment in general, but we didn't have any concerns with the removal of that variance. You got that, Jamila? Yep. Okay, and my last comment was in regards to the the last variance, which was a new variance that got added, and my computer is freezing up, so that's good. And it's uh, that was variances to the entire development area properties A, B, and C. Um, uh, the variance makes a very specific reference to the proposed medical clinic parking, but the shared parking, uh, we don't know how that'll be divided up, but it's supposed to apply to the entire development. So I, I, I have a concern that if it's left saying for the proposed medical clinic on property A, that that will cause future problems. And I think the intent was that 
the shared parking is uh, there for everybody. We just don't know how it's going to be divided up yet. So we'd like to leave that condition with uh, and have the for the purpose for the proposed medical clinic on property A stricken out. Um, okay, so the just so that I can make sure that I've got this. So for the purpose of this development, the external boundaries of the property as shown on A, B, and C on site plan, DA uh, 18885 shall be deemed to be the lot lines for the purpose of providing the required parking for the proposed medical clinic on property A, maneuvering space aisles width for all parking on site and access driveways, providing means of ingress and egress to all required parking on site and shall be the boundaries and not the individual properties uh, boundaries of property A, B, and C created by land severance a file SCB 18157. So you would like it to be stricken out and so it shall read um, for the purposes of this development, blah, 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 shall be deemed to be the lots for the purposes, whoa, sorry, uh, for the purposes of uh, providing the required parking, uh, maneuvering space aisle width for all parking on site and access driveways providing means of ingress and egress, et cetera. That's correct. Correct. I would have said it. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, we, the property has easements already in favor of uh, all reciprocal for all three properties. So that was really the intent. So we don't want to restrict it to one specific type of use because we don't know what the end user is going to be. It could be professional office. It could be retail. It could be personal service. So in our view, restricting it to medical clinic, uh, it wasn't uh, wasn't the intent in the first place. Anyone want to say anything or bring a motion echoing what was said by Jamila? So I have uh, Bob. I'll move it as amended. Okay, so that, and I have Nancy seconding. So that is removing property A variance three, removing the line of medical clinic and changing the condition for archeological to a note. Yes, yes. Perfect. Correct, Perfect. okay. Yeah. That was Bob and Nancy. All in favor, yeah. yeah all in favor, David, anyone opposed? Carrying none. Great. Thank you for your time. Cheers. Okay. And we're all set for the next one. DNA 2232 for 10 Central Park Avenue in Dundas. And we have uh, the owner registered to speak, Justin. Justin, hey, yep. I'm here. Thanks for hearing me today. Okay, hang on, Justin. Are we missing an I for LS or would you have an extra L like Ernie L's? It would be what? extra L from Ernie L's. Okay, E L L S. Yes, sir. Uh, comments appear to be favorable. I'm assuming there's no interested parties in support or against this. Anyone have any questions they wish to ask? Move it. Move yeah, Stern and Nancy. All in favor? Opposed? Terry. Ding dong. Thank you very much. Have a good day, everyone. Bye bye. Okay, and we're all set for the next one. A and B 2076 for 205 Sunny Ridge in Ancaster. And we have the agent uh, Christian registered to speak. 
Good afternoon, committee, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Go ahead. Anyone have any questions, comments? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, I notice on the comments, staff comments, that um, source water protection had, was supposed to have some comments that were attached and I didn't get those. Sorry, uh, Mike Christie is uh, on the line and possibly he can clarify. He is from Source Water. <laughs> okay, it's, yeah. <laughs> well, through the chair, yeah, Mike Christie, project manager in Source Water Protection as part of Hamilton Water. Uh, apologies if you didn't get the comments, they were sent slightly late, but uh, whenever we look at severances in the rural area, uh, a key factor is the soil type and how well soil in that on that property can manage septic pollution, really ensuring that uh, the property itself can entirely manage uh, all the septic pollution without impacting neighboring properties. So when I, I look at the soils in the area and what the typical wastewater flows would be from a single family dwelling for a severed lot, it would not be sustainable. The, the expected nitrate concentrations, which is really the main pollutant that we, were, that we use and really as an indicator for septic pollution, um, would exceed the, the drinking water quality standard and put neighboring well owners at risk. So uh, based on our desktop analysis, we wouldn't be able to support a one acre severance. Um, based on the soil type, uh, all signs point to a, a severance needing to be at least a, a hectare, which is about 2.54 Acres, and obviously we don't have that lot area here. Um, you know, the, there is an option to conduct a hydrogeological study to demonstrate that that lot is uh, meets the sustainable servicing policies of the rural Hamilton official plan. Um, but I would just caution the applicant and committee that. Uh, you know, a hydrogeological report does not pr necessarily promote a favorable outcome. It may just confirm the city's findings. Thank you, Mike. I actually have a comment to that. We we did do a hydrological study, and I'll be sending that off to you um, soon enough. And it does support the the, the study says uh, it is supporting uh, a, a septic bed. Um, so I think we should be okay there. Uh, I think there may the oh, sorry through the chair. Uh, there may be a differentiation uh, here in terms of whether the actual uh, property could support a system. Uh, that may in fact be true. What we look at in source water are the groundwater quality impacts associated with that septic system, not necessarily the functionality of that system. Um, so when we look at our review, we look at those groundwater quality risks, which, which uh, you know I'm happy to look at if you have a hydrogen report to uh, to submit. I'm happy to take a look at it. Great, I will and submit that for sure. Just before, I, before we continue, sounds like this might be a good one to table and have further discussion. I don't think we're gonna have a reviewed Hydro G report while we're sitting. <laughs> so just tabling it and meeting and having these things sorted out or amended or changed or some other system or whatever you, and then bring it back to the next hearing and then we can hear it at that time, hopefully with a softer comment from the partner. Are you in agreement with that, Mr. Santano? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I was just thinking that maybe we could put that as a condition. Um, as far as I know from the hydrological study, it uh, so it does support it. Um, but I mean, we can always leave it as a condition. Uh, we have David wishing to speak. Yeah, I'm not happy with making it as a condition because we don't know. Uh, I'd rather just table it. I make a motion to table. Yeah. Second that. Seconder for tabling. All in favor? Opposed? Terry. Okay, none. The application's tabled. I think it's in your interest, sir, because uh, if you were pushing it, it'd lick keep, and what I can see would not have been favorable. Have this sorted out and brought back with some softer uh, comments, then hopefully it will go. Well, sir. Sure. Thank you. Um, and sorry, uh, Mr. Zentano, um, could you also please clarify with the owner whether or not they intend to continue with their application for a minor variance for a, an accessory building that was submitted um, slightly before your application um, and it was tabled? Um, so if you could just clarify that, because that would have a bearing on um, several things to do with your uh, severance as well. Yes, I believe we will be. Uh, it was done with a different agent, so uh, I'll mm -hmm. I'll talk to the owner. Okay, Hopefully thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you in the not too distant future. Okay, thank you. Good. Thank you, Mr. Chan.
a tough one now. Okay. Okay, uh, so we are hearing the next one for FLB 2073 for 2390 Highway 5 West in Flamborough. We have uh, the agent uh, registered to speak, we have the owner, and we have uh, one interested party as well. Okay, who's going to first to speak on this on behalf of the application? Is it the uh, agent, Ian? Yes, Ian here. Okay, you've probably seen the comments and you've probably read some things you weren't thrilled about. At this time, I'm going to ask if you want to proceed with the application and we make a decision today, or do you want to table it to perhaps discuss some of the stuff and bring it back without the recommendations to the departments, which are negative at this point? Would we be able to talk about it first and then decide if we can table it or not? Because <laughs> then we just sit here and do an application and table it. So. <laughs> Just give me a second here and I'll talk to the owner. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, Mel who had a question, I believe. I'm not sure. Okay, well, wait to see what they come back. A whole, I whole have to see the proper questions and then have a table okay. with that void. That's a lot of bills spent. Now the staff's pretty conclusive that they're not in favor of it. Unless he changes something, he can discuss it, that's fine. But. Well, I just want to point out uh, the staff is not supporting it because they said that we are fragmenting agricultural land and a natural heritage feature. Uh -huh. And I don't know if, if you guys got any of the pictures that I submitted with the application or had a chance to visit the property. There's a large ravine that on the west side of this property that divides the usable farmland up from the neighboring property. Okay. So that section of property that we're looking to do a lot line adjustment with is currently unusable and it has been unusable for a number of years. And it can't use be can't be used for agricultural. We can't even get any farm equipment over there. So it has no use to us. And it is not a heritage feature. There's nothing on there that would deem it as an environmentally sensitive area. And because there's a flat portion at the top of this property next to the neighbor, it provides more use to the neighbor. So it makes more sense to move the lot line adjustment so the neighbor can use it. We're not changing the use of the property. It'll still stay the same before and after the severance. Okay. Now there's an interested party there. Who's there that's an interested party? I am. I'm taking it over. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to purchase the extra acre. Okay, so you're the person that wants to acquire the property. Correct. Correct. And what's your intentions with it? Um, basically just more land, potentially for my kids to play on. Okay. It was unusable land when I purchased the house, and I've cut the grass there, just make it cleaner, closer to my house, and Hopefully my kids can play on it. Okay, so this this is definitely interesting information. Uh, does Dale or someone have any comments based on what yeah. they've heard? Yeah. Now, Mr. Chairman, uh, I seem to have lost my, lost my video. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I visited the site and um, I concur with what the comments were from the agent. Um, this piece of property uh, is too small to farm and it's not uh, really agricultural related property. So uh, I don't have a problem with uh, with this application. Okay, that's wonderful. Anyone else? Mel? And we had uh, Mel. Yeah, I was up to visit the property and uh, what little bit could be farmed. They couldn't get a piece of machinery there if they tried because there's a, a gully there that they couldn't get across. And uh, I, I think this is a good way to, to utilize that land because the owner of uh, 2408 has been cutting the grass and keeping it neat. I don't know for how long, probably as long as he's lived there. So uh, I'm in favor of, uh, of 
And we have Margaret as well. Yes. Um, well, I think considering that um, it doesn't meet the rural official plan, um, I don't think I could support this. Um, even if the applicant is, or at least the future purchaser is going to be mowing the lawn, I think that it doesn't conform to the official plan and it cannot be supported. Anyone else? Tom Loftrick here, if I may. Uh, I think staff are taking a technical position. They're right uh, in, in the sense that it, it, it you know, goes against the plan and the bylaw. But that's why we have committees of adjustment, it seems to me. Um, the, 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 the plan, the official plan calls for trying to keep 100-acre parcels of agricultural land that we don't have a hundred acres here even before the severance as far as the remaining property is concerned. We're, we're not taking, and the other object of the plan seems to me is to not to take agricultural land out of the system. Uh, granting the severance isn't doing that. And, and so I agree with the uh, other committee members' uh, comments, I suppose, except for Margaret, with all due respect. Th th this is clearly something that that uh, the, the plan the plan doesn't contemplate. It's a situation where uh, all of the purposes of the plan are not being uh, contravened by by granting the severance. Seems to me. Okay, so I'm going to take a motion, Dale. I'll yeah, second. yeah, I agree with Tom uh, wholeheartedly. That's why the committee's here, and, and planning has to go with what policy says. So I make a motion to uh, approve the application. Okay, and I have but, Mel seconding. Yep. Yeah, all in favor? Opposed, Margaret. Application approved. Thank you very much. Me this time. <laughs> yes, sorry. I'm not I'm, making tea today. I'm managing it all by myself, so it's a little bit easier if I leave people unmuted who are committee members. Um, okay, uh, sorry, just one minute. Okay, so I am all set for the next one, whenever you are. Um, and Mr. Chairman, just so you know, your camera is off. Is it? Yep. Yeah. Sorry. All right, so we have SCA 2130 for 381 Mud Street East in Stony Creek. And we have the agent uh, registered to speak. Okay, who's speaking? Um. Good afternoon, uh, committee members, Mr. Chairman. This is Alfonso Alamo. I'm the, uh, the contractor with its uh, home that wants, well, basically the house that's going to be built, and including the uh, the accessory garage. Okay. Well, comments seem pretty good. Does committee have any questions or concerns? Uh, we're good on our end. Move it. Move it. Second, okay. Nancy. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. <coughs> and 
TV yet? Anybody? Okay. Pardon me? Am I on TV yet? No, no. sorry. Thank you. Okay. What happens? It's good. good. Maybe not. You guys are in the dark. I'm in the dark. Okay. Were you able to figure it out, Mark? I know. I press start my video and it says stop. Press it again. No. Uh, so just press start my video and then just leave it for a couple seconds. Okay. There you go. Perfect. Said so you have my staff to help me. <laughs> I mean, there you go. There you are. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> okay. All right. So we are all set for the next one. So we're yep. hearing SCA 2183 for 601 Green Mountain Road in Stony Creek. And we have the agent, um, Alex, registered to speak. Yeah, Alex, are you there? Alex? Hello? applicant um he's there i'm not sure why he's not speaking <coughs> i don't see hello you there alex we go. Uh, hey, hello can you hear me yeah i can yeah. hear you okay Have hi there you, the comments? you can see that the staff is not in support of this application is there anything you want to say that might persuade the committee otherwise well um if the staff would have came to site they would have seen the uh adjoining properties have buildings bigger than than the building that we are looking to build the neighbor to the east is 404 square meters um and he actually let me measure his buildings. Um, the reason being is he's in favor of what we are wanting to do. Um, the neighbor on the west, uh, we are trying to avoid, uh, let's say, a scrapyard, for a say. Um, the neighbor's got lots of junk outside, trailers, um, RVs, and that's what we're trying to avoid with this build. We're trying to get everything inside um, the accessory building to clean up the property and actually both neighbors on the east and west um they did want to join this meeting and i i said it wasn't necessary because they were in favor of the of the build that we we we're trying to go for here okay committee have any questions go ahead dale yeah so i visited the site uh, a couple days ago um, just to verify that it was the one that was tabled previously. Um, and he's been willing to work with us on this one. He's dropped the size down uh, a little over 100 square meters. Um, I know it's still over the, um, the recommended 200 meters squared. But this is a big lot. As you can see in the picture, and I did some math, and it's just a shade under three acres is what the whole area is. He is willing to take down two small accessory buildings that are behind the house. Um, and grateful enough that he hasn't gone ahead and started something here uh, and then asked for forgiveness rather than permission. So he's trying to, he's trying to stay uh, um, legal and, and, and do everything right. And, and I think he's, he's willing to work with us and I, I think that we could work with him on this and uh, I could okay this now, whereas I could not before. Okay, that sounds fair. Anyone else? Uh, so we have Vern and then Mel. Hey, Vern? I'd like to confirm uh, just um, what our colleague has just said. I visited the site also and something that I noticed when I was there there's not even a mark in the snow where they've started construction. And usually I'm one of the people that I just hate it when people start building without a permit. This has not happened in this situation. 
and I can see the, the uh, two units or three units, pardon me, that were sitting there covered with snow, just waiting for somebody to put them inside. And I believe when I talked to somebody there, they did tell me that the one trailer contained about $9,000 worth of equipment. Now that $9,000 would be far in excess of what the trailer was worth. And I can simply understand why somebody want to have a building and put this thing inside along with some of the other equipment that was there. So I'm in favor of this too. I, I give it my full support. Okay, Mel? Yes, uh, I visited the place also, and I think I agree with everything that the other two have said here. Uh, one thing about it, uh, there's other buildings in the next door neighbors and down the road have got bigger uh, buildings on their lots than what this one will be. Uh, so I'm in favor of it. Okay, I think I've heard enough. Do you want to make a motion, anyone? I have uh, Dale and Mel. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Seeing none. See, that's the way a committee is supposed to report them. <laughs> 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 <It is. laughs> It out, see some massaging going on. And this time. <laughs> it's, okay. Sounds like sounds like if you got too much stuff, move to Green Martin Road and join the crowd. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're on to Picardy. Yeah. Oh. Sounds like a good drink. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's after you've had a few. <laughs> okay, right. wonderful. All right, so we are hearing, oh, not that one, SCA 2236 for 67 to 113 Picardy Drive in Stony Creek, and we have the agent uh, registered to speak. Joe, are you there? Everybody? Hey. Hello. How are you? Good. Well, it's nice to see you have one that doesn't have a lot of negative comments or neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions from the committee? Uh, not at all. The, 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 just proposed it was the, the semi-detached dwellings. Move it. Both variances are being approved. I'm happy for you to approve it. Move it. Nancy and Vern. <laughs> Dale seconded. All in favor? Okay. Opposed? <laughs> None? Carried. Thank you. This is this is a record time. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, I and know gals. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great afternoon. Be well. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Thank um, you. Um, Usually the Plato one's going for a while. Okay. okay. Uh, so we did have a break scheduled um, for now. Um, did we want to take five minutes? Keep going. I would like to go to my truck and get the rest of my applications. I have to have the package out there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we'll take five minutes and we will resume at uh, 2.45 um, for 125 Mount Albion. Got it.
Okay. Okay. Let's roll. Okay, so let's see if we got everybody. So I see Dale, David, Nancy, Thomas, are you there? I'm here. I see what okay. the problem is now. I'm on the list as an attendee and not as a panelist. Yes, for some reason I can't make you a panelist. Um, so that will be something that we'll have to deal with um, offline or before the next meeting. Okay. Okay, let's rock. I don't see Bob yet. This is not Ward 7, so he should be here. Okay, yes. So we've just missing Bob. Okay. Um, all right, so we'll start and then we'll just make a note that Bob's not here. Okay, so we are hearing HMA 2077 for 125 Mount Albion Road in Hamilton. We have the agent David Wilson registered as well as uh, an interested party uh, for this file. Okay, Mr. Wilson, do you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, the comments seem to be pretty good. There's an interested party. Uh, sir or ma'am, whoever you are, if you wish to speak, we need your name and address for the record and you're free to make any comments if you wish. Um, I'm on phone. Okay. Okay, go Can you ahead. Hear me? Okay, it's Debbie Longcar, 364 Mount Morency Drive, Hamilton. I'm directly behind 125 Mount Albion. Mm. See you're on the map here. Okay. What's your concerns? Um, there is just a couple. Uh, the back said it was going to remain the same, but I see they've moved windows and the doors. As long as it's the same footprint, I'm fine with that. But they said they were going to leave it as is at the last meeting. Yes, may I respond? Is that the case? It's good as and what's your other concern? It's going to be the same dorm or out at the back but it, it, they're just changing the locations of the window within that parameter and the doors? Yes, that's correct. Okay, I see you put a skylight in on the roof. That wasn't in before. Is it a skylight or not? If I'm looking directly at the back, it's to the right. There's a small window added when we ask for no more. Applicant, response? Yes, may I respond? Yes, please. Yep. Yes, the footprint of the building has remained the same. The, um, the dormer on the back of the building remains the same. We slightly repositioned the windows. The actual window area is slightly smaller than it was, than it is at present. Uh, that is a, indeed a skylight that you see. Um, there isn't a direct view from the skylight. I don't, I don't imagine it's, uh, the footprint well, of the I'm building. Assume, is, I, I'm okay. assuming the reason you're, you're putting a single window and you're moving the door is over, but that, uh, the bump out with the siding on, it's going to remain the same size. You're not increasing that at all. That's but, my concern. I just want that confirmed. Sorry, that's correct. Yes, it's exactly the same and remains unchanged. Oh, it must be due to structure inside the layout because it doesn't even seem reasonable for the amount of space you're gaining. That's all I can understand from that. I'm sorry, from the dormer at the rear? Yes. 
to move the doorways over and and the windows uh it's the same footprint outside it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me that's why i wanted the confirmation on that it wouldn't increase in size oh I, I yes i understand your question uh the reason for for rearranging them is just slightly to improve the floor the sort of utility of the floor area inside so it has so the the structure and the framing of the dormer will remain unchanged okay it's, that's it, it great was, yeah it was just to accommodate uh, there's a kitchen counter and and just trying to make the uh, interior more amenable all right. Uh, for the HVAC units, uh, there's six units, yet you have placement for eight. I just wondered, I'm not, you know, I just wondered why <coughs> there's eight units out there. Which um, I may have, well, there's, there has to be one for the main, um, there's a, uh, like one for each unit. This There was just sort of an estimate. I'm not an HVAC person and we haven't had it sized or anything for HVAC. It's just that we have to accommodate some for the, the common areas, the hallways, um, as well as a storage area. All right, I just have two other things. The one is location of the dumpster. We we asked that it not be at the back. That was an issue with rats in the past with, with previous owners and of course smell. And uh, it, we were assured that it would be placed at the front, but I don't see anywhere where you're putting that or where you're gonna keep the garbage. That's a big concern. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure where it is now. I don't. Is there a dumpster I don't see there? It. That's my concern. Um, okay. Well, we were planning on putting a smaller garbage area up against the up against the building, close to where the up um, sort of where the present basement entrance is. At the side of the building, then. Yes. All right, is, and you're assuring me it won't be at the back, it'll be at the side of the building because it was a real nuisance in the in the past. I mean, it's been empty for a while, but we had to have exterminators come in and there was rather large rats and it was a, a real issue. Yes, I can see that that would be. I, I can't actually guarantee, it sounds kind of lame, but I can't guarantee that. Um, it doesn't actually form part of the application of the building permit or of the variances, but I understand that the owner, his intention is to make the building better and to avoid the issues that have had with the building previously. He wants to turn into a high quality property that doesn't have headaches and is low maintenance and even from his business perspective. Well, uh, I go, intentions are great, but the reality of where it ends up is my concern. My last concern here, sir, is the fence because my fence is being held up by planks on 125. My fence was completely, when they did that swell wall, it was the base of my fence, the, 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 the where it goes in the ground was all disturbed. So my fence is being held up by posts on 125. Your, the owner of the building did that to hold up my fence, which is kind of hanging on by a hair in a prayer right now. I want assurance that, and it said a plank fence, but when I spoke to him, and um, my neighbor, uh, uh, Brian, also spoke to him and he assured us it would be the highest legally possible and that it would be attractive wood and steel fence that would be located on the swell wall. And I would like some kind of confirmation on that because again, all it says is a plank fence. And I'll be, I'll be going into the second year of my fence hanging on by a, a, a prayer right now. It's, it's, okay. it's uh, uh, ma'am. Okay, everything you've said is being kept on record before the committee. It's not, even though these things are very valid and understandable, they're not actually part of the application for variances, which we are saying. But quite often people bring out comments and get assurances, but that's not something that we can police. We variances that are requested and, uh, He's trying to respond to me right now at this point, so they are on the record. Now, does the committee have any questions based on what they have heard? I have Nancy and Byrne. Go ahead, Nancy. I'm uh, prepared prepared to move it. David I'm Byrne, prepared to Western. second it. Yes, okay, so there's a motion moved and seconded for uh, approval of the variance as requested with comments and all in favor? Opposed?
opposed? Yes. Carried. Seeing none. Decision will be sent out as well as to the interested party that gave the comments. To the right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next one is safe. that position that wasn't around for the first one. Yes, uh, so I believe she is on now. Okay. Yes, hello. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I did actually, I was on the phone and I called in, so I could hear you. I just, you couldn't hear me. Well, you got lucky this time. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> My apologies. Okay. Are we ready to go on this one? Or do you need some time? To do it? Uh, no, I'm all good. So we are hearing HMA 2233 for 11 Gage Avenue in Hamilton. And we have the agent, uh, Sadie, registered to speak. Hey, Sadie, you see the comments. They're not all as what I'm sure you hope they would be. Is there anything you want to say? Do you want to proceed? Uh, yeah, so I do actually have a couple comments, if I may. Um, sure, so um, just in regards to variances one and two, there were positive comments from staff, um, but ultimately they did not um, approve of it. Um, but I would just like to highlight that they did mention the HSR routes and the availability of amenities in the area. And so I would ask if the committee would approve based on those comments, as well as the fact that we are looking to intensify, um, which I believe that is in line with the Planning Act. For example, Bill 108, which in turn influences the official plan. Um, also, I would like, or I believe that staff comments are very technical. In this case, the property just isn't given much justice um, for what's existing. So I would ask if the committee would please consider approving. Um, and I will accept any questions, please. Anybody? I have Margaret. Yes, do, do we have uh, staff? here at the moment who could comment on this um, because I, I'm just a little uh, confused about the fact that we have approved a number of these in the past. Um, I'm thinking about uh, various <coughs> one where it is the existing uh, lot area. There's nothing that can be done about that. Um, I can understand uh, some concerns, new concerns about the parking. But the lot area, um, this seems to be a new comment that's being made by staff. I think there was one last time as well. Um, since we have approved these in the past and the comments have been favorable in the past through staff, if maybe somebody could just explain. Uh, so through the chair to the committee member, um, so Staff comments related to lot area are often dependent on other variances. So given that uh, the lot is not in sufficient in size to accommodate a parking space that is of a size um, in accordance with the zoning bylaw, it doesn't meet the minimum requirement uh, for width or length of the required parking space uh, size. And so because of that, uh, we're not supportive of a reduction to no parking spaces for a duplex dwelling. And um, since we can't support that variance, it would be um, in contrast to a recommendation for variance two to recommend approval of variance one, uh, given that we evaluate lot area based on whether they have sufficient parking, amenity area, landscaping on the property. And since we're not satisfied that that is being achieved in this case, uh, staff is not supportive of either variance. But it, it's uh, mainly to do with variance two is why we can't support variance one. Got it. Maybe. I have Nancy. Um, just regarding variance, I don't know what variance it is. I think it's number four regarding the um, the balcony. Uh, I, I get there's a little bit of a compassion piece there, 
because it has been there for some time and prior to this particular owner owning it, but it was built without permits. And I guess I just want to, I guess, make sure, know that there's some reassurance that it's built safely. Um, there was an issue many years back about an unsafe second story balcony that collapsed and uh, a little bit too late maybe, but um, you're proving that based on the fact that it's been there for a long time. But without the permits, we don't know whether that was actually um, a safely built or, or a code built um, balcony. So staff, I'm wondering what your thought is on that. Through the chair to the committee member, uh, anything to do with the code would have to go through the building division. Um, right. So it was just regarding the variance for the projection is what we're um, okay. giving approval. Okay. Is this parking situation, is it um, been a problem before? Like, is, is there a parking spot on this location now or not? Not a legal one. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tom Lovchick, if I may, uh, we probably have approved this sort of thing before, but it seems to me it turns on the area, availability of bus service, other parking uh, possibilities. And I, I think Gage Avenue is an overcrowded, uh, an overcrowded area so far as parking is concerned. And uh, while I, uh, you know, I guess there is the policy to increase availability of housing and whatnot, but you don't do it at a price where you wreck the neighborhood. Uh, maybe this neighborhood's already wrecked because of the parking, but I, I personally would not want to approve this because of the lack of parking. Anyone else? I have Nancy. I'm going to make a motion to deny the application. All the variances, some of them are okay. Uh, well, I'm not sure whether they would all need to be congruent in order for them to move forward. Because without the parking and the, um, well, as, dip, as indicated, the, the lot size, I guess, is really the parking. Um, I don't know that the rest matters. Well, yeah, because uh, number four is to allow the existing balcony. And that's oh, right. Favorite, so. Okay. 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 All right. Let me pull that back then. So what they're saying is, is the staff recommends that variance one and two be denied and recommends various three and four be approved. So we might as well make it somewhat bittersweet. All right. <laughs> that's where I'm going. <laughs> okay. So deny for one and two, approve three and four, seconder for that motion. We had uh, Dale, I believe. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Partially denied, partially approved. Hearing adjourned. Uh, decision will be sent in the mail along with options if they want to take it to another step thereafter. Hearing adjourned. Okay, perfect. Thank you, guys. Bye. I might as well give you a little kiss before you get stabbed. At least the bell <laughs> will get when they go to sell it. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, and uh, I'm all set for the next one. So we're hearing HM, perfect. <laughs> HMA 2235 uh, for 1 Jarvis Street in Hamilton. And we have uh, the agent uh, Franz on the line. Hey, Franz. What's going Hi on? Hi there, how are you? Getting rid of the parking lot? <laughs> I don't think, oh, eventually, yeah, that is the plan or part of a parking lot, actually. I think it was the old home of the uh, 
the headquarters for the Hamilton Tie Cats, actually, Mr. Dudzik. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yep. yep. Yep, it was. Been there often. <laughs> I think there was a rackets club there too. Yeah. There was at one point. Back in the late 80s when everyone was into that. <laughs> <laughs> now they're into Pentalon. Including half of Mr. Lofchuk's old firm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyone have any questions, concerns? Is everyone happy? I, I do have one comment that I would like to make, uh, Mr. Chair. Go for it. Um, and that's regard that's with regard to staff's recommendation to deny variance four. Uh, I have been in discussions with senior staff Shannon Mackay and Sean Stewart uh, regarding this particular variance. I think that the recommendation to de to deny uh, may have been put forth in error based on misunderstanding, and I would ask if staff can maybe comment on that. Uh, the balance of the variances were very supportive of, but we'd also like support for variance number four. I mean, perhaps I could call on Ms. Allen to comment. Go ahead, Ms. Allen. Yeah, so through the chair to the applicant. Uh, so I just wanted to clarify that uh, staff misinterpreted variance four when writing the comments. Um, it is not for the proposed rooftop mechanical equipment, but it's actually for the hydro transformer located at the northeast corner of the subject property along Jarvis Street. Um, and so the location of this uh, hydro transformer is in accordance with the conditionally approved site plan. Um, and it cannot be screened in accordance with Electra Utilities guidelines. Uh, so staff is satisfied that uh, the number of viewpoints where this will be visible are limited and um, we don't an anticipate any adverse impacts on streetscape. Uh, uh, we also want to note that there are limited alternatives that uh, where they could locate the uh, transformer given that the subject property is a through lot, uh, so there'd be limited options for where it wouldn't be visible ah, yes. from the street. Um, so as such, staff recommend approval of variance for uh, my apologies for go. any confusion. Are you happy now, Franz? I certainly am. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, make a motion. Okay, so I seconded Dale. All in favor? Opposed? Gary. Excellent. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, bye. A wonderful uh, evening. Bye. Working on it. I'm glad that Mrs. Denninger is happy, too. <laughs> it doesn't own the store anymore. Well, no, but that's Mrs. Awedowicz, whatever her name is. However you say that. AZ. AZ, yeah. More people to shop at the store. <laughs> That's okay. It's good day, okay. good business. Next. Okay. Oh boy, here we go. I just wanted to make sure that I have everybody for this item. So I believe I have everyone, um, but maybe we'll just clarify once we're, we've called the item. Uh, so we are hearing HMA 2237 for 191 King Street West and 22 Bay Street South in Hamilton. And we have the agent registered to speak. 
as well as an interested party. And we did have Councillor Farr registered, um, but perhaps um, I believe he sent in a letter. And so perhaps he had sent that in instead. I'm not sure if maybe Mr. Folletta knows about that or not. David, you're on, on top of this. Yeah, uh, th through you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, unfortunately, he was called away to uh, to an urgent matter. He was, yeah, he was he was speaking in. Uh, sorry, can you hear me clearly? Or I can't now. Yeah, been there for a minute, but you're okay. Okay, great. Yeah, so I believe he was called away to an urgent matter, and unfortunately, he cannot attend. He did provide a letter in support, and his uh, his attendance was was to be in support of the application. Okay, before you speak, David, there's an interested party here. I'd like to know who that is and in fact, if they wish to say anything. The interested it, party is online. Could you give us your name and address for the record, please? Th through you, Mr. Chairman, I believe that's uh, Steve uh, Kolowski, uh, Kolakowski, who's uh, in support of the application as well. He's a, uh, uh, I believe there he is. He could probably speak. Mark, sir, when our turn was on. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, Steve Kulikowski and Dave Sobe, we just expressed huh. uh, uh, support for the development. Are you guys okay with this application? Pardon me? Are you guys good with it? We're okay with it. Okay. David, anything you want to say before I ask the committee if they have questions? Mr. Chairman, I do have a, a, a brief presentation that I, I would like to highlight. Staff have identified uh, a couple of issues with two of the variances. Uh, if if uh, if I may, I'd like to share my screen and um, and take you through a present presentation if I could. Go for it. I know that I know the agenda is tight, but I'll uh, I'll try to zip through it as quickly as possible. It's an important application, so go for it. Great. Uh, so again, Mr. Chairman, my name is David Folletta, and I'm a registered professional planner with those fields. We're acting on behalf of the ownership group, um, and. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you should have received two letters, one in support from Councillor Farr and one in support from uh, Mr. Steve Kolakowski, who again is on the line uh, here today. And these are two important elements that I'll speak to later in my presentation. In, in terms of, a, uh, of an agenda for, for my presentation today, I'm just going to give you a brief uh, overview of the context and the site. Most of you are generally aware of it, what the proposed development is. And then um, I'll overview the, the variances and then I'll uh, really zone in, in on the two variances that staff are not supporting uh, and what our position generally is on them. And then I'll follow up with some, uh, some questions at the end. Go ahead. So in, in terms of the site itself, uh, as we know, it's sort of at ground zero right in the downtown core. It's close to very many um, uh, downtown amenities. Um, specifically, you know, commercial, employment, residential, um, entertainment, and uh, uh, amenity space areas, so open spaces and whatnot, and mo most importantly, transit. Uh, there's a number of reasons why redevelopment of this parking lot is important. Um, similar to the Jarvis Street site, intensification in the core is a long-term vision for the site and for the city. The other thing I'd like to highlight is uh, McMaster's presence in the core. Some of you may acknowledge that it really initiated in 2007 with the development of the David Braley Center, which is located here at the corner of Bay and Main Street. Um, as well, they've also developed the uh, McMaster uh, Continuous Education uh, Center in Jackson Square. Again, those are the first two steps in the downtown core that the, that the university has taken to really establish itself um, other elements, they also own the subject site uh, today. I'll, I'll go through a little bit of the ownership later when we talk about variance one. Uh, and then in addition to this, they also own uh, the site to the north of the Braley Center. So right across, this, across Bay Street from here. And the idea is to really establish uh, a McMaster precinct in the core, an institutional uh, precinct <laughs> of uh, uh, you know, glorious buildings uh, and uh, and McMaster's presence. Um, in, in terms of immediate context, some general highlights. The subject sites identified in red here. The block is generally from King to George, Caroline to Bay. I want to highlight that uh, that building that's under construction is now built. It's a 32-story condominium tower uh, that Vrancor uh, has built. 
Uh, Mr. Kolakowski's building is in between it and us at 10 George Street. That's that uh, four-story office building. Um, it's a brick heritage building directly next to us. And then there's sort of an additional vacant uh, 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 portion at the corner. Some other elements I'd like to highlight are obviously the Braley Center, the David Braley Center directly to the southeast of this center. And then there are three uh, existing taller building elements uh, directly south of us on the south side of George. Those uh, those heights are, are 12, 26, and 16 stories. So there is a tall building context and a, and a relatively tight building context as well in terms of uh, those buildings' relationships to each other and to the street. Um, in terms of the proposed development, the first phase is for the McMaster uh, graduate student residents. You would have seen that in our uh, in our submission materials. Um, it's basically the northern portion of the site, and we have filed applications for site plan and holding removal for that site. Uh, as part of that, there was a discussion on incorporating the land to the south, uh, which was also purchased by McMaster. And we'll go through sort of that ownership in a bit. And the variances before you today really do facilitate this development and they help to facilitate uh, the site uh, comprehensively uh, as a development. Some, some highlights are on the screen for you. Uh, the McMaster Student Graduate uh, Residence Building is a 30 story building. It has a gross floor area of about 38,000 square meters. Uh, it will accommodate 453 units uh, for, for, again, student uh, residence suites. Uh, it has 263 parking spaces and 263 uh, uh, bicycle parking spaces. This is a general ground floor plan uh, of it. I won't spend too much time going through it. I will highlight a couple of elements. Um, specifically want to highlight that there's sort of a two-story podium along King Street. And then there's a mid-rise portion, which is the nine-story podium, which is pulled back from the street. And then there's the tower, which is you know located right at the corner to really anchor that corner with a, an important and iconic building. The two stories is intended to replicate and respond to the heritage buildings on the north side of King Street. Again, I won't spend too much time going through the proposal, but I think it's important to recognize um, uh, how much time and effort has been put into this building. Um, really wanted to highlight with this ground floor plan, the, 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 the site's commitment and the proposal's commitment to the public realm. Um, more specifically, you know, really highlighting the paving treatment uh, along the street, urbanizing the street edges, providing street trees and planters, uh, providing a similar streetscape to what we have in front of and, and beside uh, the David Braley Center. Again, creating that important downtown uh, quality streetscape context and really preparing what's there today. Um, if, if any of you have visited it lately, you'll what I've seen, it's very stark, you know, it's, an, it's a parking lot. It, it has a, a, a very loose edge, not an urban edge. Uh, you know, replicate of a, of a very suburban condition. Um, I'm gonna just fly through, like, the architect is, is Don, uh, Don Smith and Cecily, who are from Diamond Schmidt Architects, and they've created something special here in terms of the design. Just highlighting some of these elevations. I wanna get to the renderings, which are the most important views of this site. Uh, you wouldn't have seen this in the submission materials, uh, it's part of the site plan application. And I think it's important to highlight, you know, very quality, high quality design, uh, very similar to uh, what's happening with uh, other buildings that McMaster has built. Um, really focusing on the streetscape, uh, a very important architectural uh, element. Um, and these again are just some views of the surrounding context and how it's going to fit uh, within that context. So important uh, uh, about highlighting the architectural expression, the high quality design, high quality materials, a uh, very important and iconic building at a very important location in the downtown core. Now this, this site, uh, this plan here is kind of showing what's happening on the remainder of the block. So again, we've, we've really firmed up what we wanna do with the graduate student residents. But the second part is that second building, which you'll see on the left side of the screen right here. And uh, McMaster re recently purchased this land. Uh, it closes in two weeks. And like I said, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but what we're trying to do with this application is look at the site comprehensively. 
and, and, and look at how a development can fit on that. So what this variance does is it really sets the stage and really uh, locks in the, 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 the development of, the, of both parcels and the entire development. So that's what uh, you will see here in terms of context and how it will fit. So if you can sort of picture this site and how it fits within the context of the surrounding uh, buildings, and you can kind of start to visualize how this one will be. Unfortunately, the um, uh, uh, the hotel building at the corner of uh, George and Bay is not on on here, but uh, you can sort of visualize a 16-story building there that sort of fits in within this context. Um, just wanted to kind of highlight some of the the policy context. I think it's important um, that you know the city recently approved uh, its new secondary plan. And that secondary plan really does establish a framework for the site. Key highlights um, is that, you know, the secondary plan does, among other things, three important things for the downtown. It's really promoting downtown living and bringing people to the core. It's improving and strengthening the built environment with high quality buildings at key locations that serve as gateways and view corridors. And then the last thing is really to improve the public realm. And uh, we think that this um, uh, the proposal before you today does all of those things and more. Um, and I think uh, when you look at staff's comments and based on our discussions with staff, we all generally agree that the proposal in principle and from a, high, uh, uh, a higher perspective does conform to the secondary plan and does represent, represent the implementation of that secondary plan. But I would suggest that it goes far beyond just conformity. There are a number of other uh, important public benefits like adding a significant amount of people to the downtown. Like I said before, 453 student graduate uh, suites that will bring uh, singles, sem uh, you know, singles and families to the core. Uh, it's, a, it's an important uh, public benefit for the entire city. Um, it'll provide rental tenure for for uh, for graduate student rental uh, for graduate students in the core. Um, Again, a significant improvement to the streetscape, uh, which again is a significant public benefit. And then again, the addition of a high quality building in the core. That's gonna be built by uh, 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 McMaster University, who has shown its commitment to the core and its commitment to providing and building high quality buildings in the core. So I won't touch on the zoning. I think uh, staff have outlined what the zoning is and where we're varying. At this point, I'd like to kind of go through the variances and I'm gonna focus on the three uh, that staff are not supporting. So the first one is, is, is variance one. And basically what that means is we'd like the site uh, to be considered as one. So right now there are two parcels. McMaster basically controls both parcels and we'd like for, uh, uh, for, for the zoning perspective, for it to be considered one and to be reviewed uh, in co consolidation and collectively. Um, so what I'd like to add is that, um, you know, there's two parcels, the King Street parcel and the Bay Street parcel, which I'm referred to uh, as, um, and the ownership is a bit complicated. So the King Street parcel, which is where the, student, uh, where the graduate student residence is going, um, uh, is on a 200 year land lease uh, from, Leggett, from the Leggett family. So the Leggett family owns it and McMaster holds a 200 year lease on that property. Uh, so that kind of clarifies that ownership for that parcel. The second parcel, which is the, the 22 Bay Street parcel, uh, that one is uh, was recently purchased by McMaster University um, uh, and uh, it closes in two weeks. So that will, you know, all the conditions have been cleared and it will be closing in two weeks. So for all intents and purposes, both properties are consolidated, um, although the ownership is a bit tricky. And I will also add, there's another tricky layer to it. When I say McMaster University, I'm also uh, saying McMaster University and Nightstone. Nightstone is a student residence uh, developer that has partnered up with McMaster on these properties. And they have agreements in place to develop these properties uh, comprehensively and collectively. So I understand staff's position that they don't formally merge on title and the zoning bylaw doesn't really recognize this type of situation. So if we kind of take the ownership away from it, and, uh, and we look at the site independently, we can say that they should be looked at comprehensively. And we think because of the ownership uh, and the unique nature of this ownership, 
they, they should be looked at uh, comprehensively and uh, as a unique element. Um, again, I'll answer some questions to this uh, after. Uh, the, the, next, the next variance is I won't go through staff for supportive of these uh, in terms of the setback. So these are variances two and three. So I'm going to skip over these slides, but I'd be happy to go through them if you do have any further questions. Now, variances four and five, um, it, these are a little bit more complicated. Uh, so variance four is a reduction in the tower setback from basically 12 and a half meters to nine meters and variance five is to allow for 20 meters between towers instead of 25. So these are kind of highlighted here for you on the screen. Um, so the first one I'm gonna tackle is the nine meter setback. Um, as you'll notice that, you know, in this, in this corner, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but uh, at the corner of Bay and George Street, that's where we're protecting for a second building. Uh, that's the general form we think the building will take. And we'd like to protect for it because we think that that's basically the minimum size to actually get a feasible development on that site. Um, and what that means is that that setback uh, from the tower to that property line, which is to uh, 10 George Street, uh, needs to be reduced from 12 and a half meters to, uh, to nine meters. Um, and we outlined in our, in our submission to you, uh, as well as to staff, that um, that, that reduction uh, is, uh, is intended to do a number of things. The 12 and a half meters is intended to provide for a minimum of 25 meters separation distance between towers. So to protect for orderly development on the block, um, as well as provide for uh, space for transition, as well as uh, light view and privacy. So in, in order to determine whether or not, you know, um, that, that allows for uh, orderly de de development, what we did was we took a really close look at the block. And what you'll see is we looked at where the towers are proposed, and we also analyzed where they could be located on this block. And we think the most appropriate location for uh, towers on this block specifically, on most blocks that are tight and in a downtown core like this, are generally at the corners. So we think uh, where they are uh, located is appropriate, and this would help <laughs> the, the second thing that we did is we looked at whether or not it would uh, – it would impact the development of abutting lands. And when we reviewed uh, this site in, uh, in, in, in detail, we noticed that it, it does still allow four towers to be located uh, at 10 George Street. It might, you know, it'll be a little bit tighter than normal. It'll little be, be a, a bit smaller than normal, but a tower could potentially be located there. Uh, the other thing we did do is we, we, uh, we spoke to the owners. Uh, uh, Stephen uh, is here today. Uh, speaking in support uh, of what this uh, proposal will do. Um, so again, we've thought about sort of the orderly development. In terms of transition, um, what I will what I will notice is uh, is that um, you know this this site in the context specifically here uh, it is a bit tighter, and it does uh, uh, include you know taller tower uh, forms that are in tighter proximity to side lot lines. Uh, uh, and, and and it's it's a very tight context in terms of built form, um, and we'll all also notice that these setbacks uh, are are uh, have been approved in other circumstances in the core, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, and then the other the other big uh, big one is the the tower um, separation distance of 25 meters. Um, and again, the purpose of this is to provide adequate spatial separation between towers on-site for adjacent lands in order to provide for space for transition, light, view, and privacy. Um, and what we've, uh, what we've uh, found in our, in our analysis and our research is that 20-meter uh, separation distance has been accepted as an appropriate distance um, in similar high-rise contexts equal to, which you know, generally represents uh, an area that's equal to about the width of a right-of-way. Uh, so you think about you know towers generally separated by streets. That's that's how you get that 20, 20 meters. So again, it's an acceptable urban design level. And I know it's a bit uh, uh, it's a bit less than what uh, what the city requires in terms of their guidelines and their provisions. Um, the other thing we did was um, we looked at uh, the student graduate residence, and it, it has a unique uh, characteristic. And that unique characteristic is that it doesn't have balconies. So typically when you have uh, tower separation distances, it does not include uh, balcony projections. So at 25 meters, 
uh, could uh, could generally be uh, reduced in uh, in space. So that distance can shrink to anywhere between three and five meters. So if both balcony, if both buildings don't have balconies, then um, then we think that those spaces can shrink from 25 to 20 because you've got you know uh, one and a half to two and a half meter balcony that would project beyond that that tower floor plane. Um, and then I guess the last thing I would say is that the new zoning bylaw and secondary plan um, is new. So we understand staff's resistance to varying it uh, and setting a precedent across the city. But I would outline that the context uh, within the downtown does vary considerably. And you think about the downtown, right? It's the area from Queen to Wellington, Cannon to Hunter. And you think about um, all of the different existing and planned built form context, I think you can recognize that within this location, uh, it's a bit different than, you know, where you would be at Maine or Hunter and Wellington, uh, as well as up at Cannon and some of those major intersections. So I would say that, you know, this context tends to be a little bit tighter. Uh, it tends to be a little bit more dense, and a little bit more intense in terms of the use, in terms of the street wall, in terms of uh, the density and height of existing buildings. Um, so I'd also highlight that, um, that, that, that the guidelines and, and the, the zoning provisions don't recognize some of the other, um, uh, some of the other uh, site specific characteristics. Uh, like um, uh, the difference between a residential building, uh, which differs from a hotel, which differs from an office building, which differs from a student residence. And what, what that means is when you've got residential condo buildings, you've got people uh, living in those buildings and units for the long term. And you've got, uh, you know, day to day overlook privacy issues uh, that you generally consider. But then you know, when you start to think about um, uh, other uses like an office use or a hotel use, which are more um, transient type uses and transient type um, uh, uh, situations, I don't think that the zoning bylaw or the guidelines do recognize this. So I do think that that's another very site specific characteristic of the student graduate residents um, uh, that, that, that really makes this unique. Um, so again, there are a number of site specific characteristics that support these variances. Um, and, and finally, you know, as I outlined earlier, there are a number of public benefits that will result from this proposal. Uh, and, and that that paired with the uh, site specific uh, characteristics really does outline uh, the need to support this application. Uh, and in terms of the public benefits, I would say that Councillor Farr uh, and his support really does highlight those. And it does recognize uh, that the importance of providing a McMaster building in the core, which is a high quality building, which will bring uh, student, you know, graduate student residents uh, with their families into this building at this location is a significant goal for the city. And it'll achieve numerous policy uh, objectives and, and numerous city building objectives. So. For these reasons and more, I respectfully request that the committee approve the application before you. And I, I, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I, can, I, I tried to highlight, get the highlights for you. I can get into more of those uh, those details if you'd like. I think you covered it all pretty good. Any questions from the committee? Uh, Tom Lofter here. The, the second building uh, at the corner of George and Bay, what, what what's the use there? Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, uh, to to uh, uh, to Dale, uh, we don't know that at this point. Again, it was purchased by McMaster, uh, and the idea was to really identify a building envelope for it. So we don't know what's going to happen with that building yet. It might be an additional student residence. Uh, it might have some institutional uses in it. Uh, there may be some other uh, uh, health sciences uh, uh, uses in there. We, we don't know at this point. And we'll obviously collaborate with with the city to provide uses that uh, conform with the bylaw and really do meet those city building objectives. And I know it's important to really try to figure out what that distance is, and um, especially as it relates to balconies on that side. Is that going up at the same time as the student residence? Is the whole thing going up at at one time? 
No, it, it's not through you, Mr. Chairman. It's not going up at the same time. We would really like to advance the uh, graduate student uh, building as soon as possible. Uh, we, you know, depending on the outcome of today's meeting, we'd like to make another resubmission for our site plan and really get to a conditional, uh, uh, conditional uh, uh, site plan approval. So we do want to advance that uh, expeditiously, but uh, we also want to protect for the future use of the remaining uh, parcel because McMaster, as you can imagine, spent a lot of money on that parcel and uh, it really is not feasible uh, to shrink that building in any way. So that's why we're trying to protect for those uh, permissions in today's building, or in, sorry, in today's meeting. Explain to me what the podium is. You got two two podiums. I'm not familiar with with what that is. Yeah, if I uh, if I could put up my presentation again, uh, Jamila, I think it would be helpful. Um, so there are sort of two aspects to the building. Um, a podium can be described in a, a number of different ways, but it's basically your street wall condition. So what's happening at grade? And what we've done is we've really projected forward the uh, the bottom two, uh, oh, I guess I could share now, sorry. Uh, the bottom two stories. Um, and I'll just, let me see if I can't find uh, a good view for you. So this is probably a good view. So again, we've really started to think about what's happening along King and, and, and Bay Street. And if you'll see that there's sort of a two-story portion that projects. So if we look at the graduate student building, which fronts onto King, which is here, uh, you'll see that the two-story portion really does project and comes uh, very close to the street line. And the intention for that is to respond to the two-story heritage buildings uh, across the street and replicate that fine grain, um, um, fine grain store uh, storefront that's across the street. We worked with our heritage consultant and the city's heritage consultant to really develop that. And then, you know, the, the rest of the podium, which is sort of that nine story podium is pulled back. And though, you know, that's sort of the, I'm going to call it mid rise section of the building. It can be a little bit fatter. It could, it could, uh, um, it, it could fill up the site and it's kind of consistent with uh, the city's, uh, the city's guidelines. And then the tower portion is basically anything above 12 stories. Uh, and, it, you know, we try to make those portions very thin and small floor plates in order to um, have a really fast moving shadow. Does that, uh, does that make sense? Well, I, I just, again, taking that two story, what you call this two story podium, uh, what, what, what is there? Is that empty space? Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, no, th those will be very active uses at grade. Um, that's where uh, uh, the gym will be located. Uh, there will likely be some uh, commercial amenities located along those. We haven't programmed it out uh, just yet, uh, but this is the ground floor plan that kind of shows it. So there's a, a large entry lobby into the building. And then uh, you'll see along uh, this part of the, the street at grade. Is that the podium there where you're... Yeah. Is that the podium? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So th those will be uh, retail and service commercial uses that that'll service not only the residents of this building, but uh, also the pub. Okay, uh, so that's sort of non McMaster stuff. Yeah, it'll be almost accessory type uh, uses, similar to when you uh, if you've if you've ever visited the David Bailey Center, there's a coffee shop in there. It kind of everybody goes in for coffee. Yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Hi. Go ahead. Oh, um, oh, yeah. Go ahead. All right, so we have Nancy and then Margaret. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I thought, go ahead, Margaret. You started. <laughs> I just um, had a question about uh, variance number one and Considering the comments that came from staff about that, did they understand that um, the one property is on a lease and cannot be joined with the other property? Because that doesn't seem to be coming through from their comments. Yeah, through, through you, Mr. Chairman, um, I see Shannon's here, which is which is great. We've been working really closely with Shannon on this file, as well as Mark Keller, and we do appreciate all the effort that 
they've put forward. And I, I have to admit, we probably have not uh, really clarified uh, that relationship to date. Um, uh, regardless, it's uh, it's sort of in our position that regardless of what the ownership is, these two parcels should be considered as one uh, for the purposes of the bylaw in terms of allowing for orderly development uh, on this site. There are a number of examples uh, in the city where they've done that, uh, as well as other municipalities uh, that really help to achieve orderly development and, um, uh, and city building objectives. Do we have any comment from staff about that? Yeah. Through, through the chair uh, to the committee member. Um, it is our position that the 05200 does actually contemplate law consolidation and those regulations whereby the internal property lines of two properties held in identical ownership are, are perceived to be nothing. Uh, in this case, because the ownership A is not completed by MAC and then B are not tied together um, there's no guarantee for us that this property wouldn't then be sold off or used for another purpose. So until the properties are either merged on title or held in identical ownership, which would then be covered by section 416 of the general provisions, then it, it's not appropriate to deem them as one lot for the purposes of removing all those zoning regulations. If I may, Mr. Madam Chairman, or Mr. Chairman, uh, what I'm getting from that is that uh, if, the, if, if the zoning for both buildings is approved, McMaster can go ahead with the student residence and perhaps put on the market the other piece of property uh, or, or, or the legates, put on the, the market the other piece of property on the basis that, look, at, it's already been approved for another tower and therefore the price is this as opposed to what it would be if it hadn't been approved. Potentially, but the chances of getting these two together, I understand from the legal perspective. Well, but, but that's just, it seems to be this, that seems to be the staff position. I, I, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just relating that. Right now I drive by it every day and it's just a place for the panhandlers to handle <laughs> stuff, so. Got to do what you have to do sometimes. Everything can't be a perfect fit. And I know you're <laughs> one, but that doesn't exist all the time. And this happens sometimes. Well, ahead, I, 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 I suppose the other thing is that uh, what does that matter? If somebody else takes it over and puts up the tower, if it's approved in the end, what's it matter? The process. That thing's been empty since before you and my, my time, Tom. So <laughs> something needs to go there eventually. Yeah. I think this is Wonderful. So, going. Go ahead, Nancy. Yeah, I think I, I was next. Uh, David, you were going to say something, but I did you not say that was sold or was that another piece and it closes in a couple of weeks? That's is that right? Three, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. So the 22 Bay Street site, which is the forms part of this application today where that second building is going. Um, yeah. But it, 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 it will be closing. McMaster will be taking ownership of it uh, in two weeks. Um, but, in, you know, I was I was going to say uh, basically what one of the members had said that uh, at, at the end of the day, we all agree that the zoning permissions that we're seeking today uh, be approved for both the site. You're kind of locking in what's happening there. And we think that actually makes sense. Uh, and, you know, obviously staff have an issue with those other two variances. So if we can deal with those, then... Um, then it really doesn't matter who owns what. Okay, and then from another perspective, we have a good corporate citizen, McMaster, dealing with this. It's not the uh, fly-by-night Toronto condo developers, which we've seen recently that come in and try to throw <laughs> something up and see if it sticks. So that's just my gut feeling on what's going on. Oh, sorry, we have David. David? Sorry, uh, David Sarwadek. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I think Tom said it perfectly. What does it matter? I think that, that whole core is open for business, and I think uh, it meets the four tests, so I make a motion for approval. Okay, looking for a seconder. All right here. I have Nancy. Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Anyone? So I have Margaret opposed. And uh, to clarify, um, David, um, that 
was that with the condition that was on there or was that with the condition removed? So, um, without. Without the condition of merging the title. Without. Without the condition. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So motion moves seconded. Um, there's one opposition. Application approved. Hearing adjourned. Thank you. different than our usual extra feet on a garage yeah. <laughs> you know something has to go there it breaks my heart every time I drive by that place because it's everything you're going to displace some more people though <laughs> yeah, I oh really that, but I knew yeah really I I was the way you know, it's okay. in terms of the old Okay, uh, so I am all set for the next one whenever you are. Just find that. And James, if you could just keep yourself muted for getting some feedback from you, and I'll uh, unmute you when it's uh, your turn to speak. Uh, so, so we are hearing HMA 2243 for 14 to 18 Augusta Street in Hamilton. And we have uh, the agent registered to speak, James Webb, as well as uh, the owner, um, Steve and uh, the other owner, David. Okay, so it sounds like there's no negative or people in opposition to this. Um, I'm assuming you've read the comments and you like what you've read. Yes, Mr. Chairman, if you can hear me okay. Yeah. Uh, we've had a chance to go through the comments and we are grateful to staff for turning this around quickly and providing a full complete review and recommending approval in all regards to all the various for the latest addition from core urban to uh, revitalizing our downtown so we're in full support and be happy to answer any questions whether myself if you have any questions for steve or dave what you doing? What you doing? so we have yeah. uh nancy nancy and is there oh mine was mine was for motion sorry oh sorry that's fine <laughs> And to do, uh, if we approve it, is it with that warning, uh, suggestion of the warning clause for the parking that they have suggested? Yes. Can I, can I speak to that just really quickly? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think it'd be preferable from our point of view, rather than do a conditional minor variance, I know that staff will pick that up and make that a condition of site plan approval. So if we can have a you know, an clean, unencumbered minor variance approval, I think that would be our preference. Then we commit to doing that through the site plan process. It probably belongs actually and has more meaning to the city if it's done as part of the undertaking. Comments, okay. anyone? Okay, so that motion then with out oh, that comment. Okay, seconder, Bob, all in favor? Opposed? Harry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I hope you're going to send that last guy a bill for going over so long. <laughs> <laughs> so what he said, he did pretty expeditiously. I got to give him credit. Yeah. Thank you all very much. Okay. David. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you. Macaulay. Tables. Okay, and so the next file was HMB 2077, and that um, I believe were in the comments that they had requested to table it. So we yep. will move on to the next item. Yeah. Ferguson? Yes, uh, sorry, just one moment. Wesley. Uh, 
Okay, so we are hearing HMA 2247 for 195 Ferguson Avenue North in Hamilton. We have uh, the agents, uh, Drew and Tim registered to speak. Good afternoon, everybody. Hi, Drew, I see you probably read the comments, which seem to be pretty good. Is there anything you wish to say? Or are you happy with what you read? Yeah, I think we're I think we're quite happy with what we read. Thank you. Any questions from the okay. committee or motion? David? We have Move it. motion for approval. Okay. Seconded. Dale, mm -hmm. all in favor. <laughs> Sorry, Mel, was that a motion or were you um asking a question? I'm just gonna second it. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Anonymous carried, hearing adjourned. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, so uh, the next file was um, uh, the owner or the agents had recommended that they would prefer it to be tabled. So we did have um, someone who was registered. Um, so the owners are not here, but there is the interested party. Okay, so perhaps the interested party could be told that it'll be tabled. We can get their name and address. They'll be advised when the hearing, if any or in any form, resumes at some other date. There he is. So, uh, Andrew, so we, um, the committee, I believe, will be making a motion for tabling of this application. So, we will um, follow up with you, and you will be, once a new date is determined, you will be receiving notice the same way that you did before. And we have Mel. Seconded. Motion to table, and Dale. All in favor? Terry. Okay, and we are hearing HMA 2239 for 215 George Street in Hamilton. And we have the agent, David Carruthers, registered to speak. You there, David? Yes, I'm here, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for seeing us today. What do you have to say about the comments posted? Uh, we've uh, read through all the comments and we, we see that we do have staff support. Um, my only comment would, uh, and so we're in agreement with uh, their report. The, the only comment I do have is uh, on the additional variances that they're asking for on page four of five. Uh, they do mention that the replacement of the existing roof and, and the homeowners won't be replacing the roof. It's actually just the shingles. So I just wanted to make that clear for the members. Move it. Okay. Motion. Okay, so we have Dale, all in favor? Opposed. There to be none. Carry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Just a note on that last one on the um the map, it had the wrong address. Yes, ma'am. It's oh. 215 Hamilton Street instead of 215 George Street. <laughs> oh, well, that's not good. It's okay, though. Okay. <laughs> I, think we, I think we got it. Everybody else knew where it was. Everybody knew where it was. I mean, sorry. Well, at least it's, <laughs> they figured so it's it out. highlighting the right property. I mean, we in the past, we've had some that highlighted the wrong property. So, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's very true. Okay. His name was George Hamilton. <laughs> the bar's still there. And it'll get busier with that new development. 
Oh my God. <laughs> he, he needs it. He needs, he needs it. it. Although from another perspective, all schools might be online for the next century and there might be no more classes. So who yeah. knows? <laughs> next century, huh? Oh. Where's this person? He has to get rid of people and stay at home, do everything online, like we're doing now. Okay, so um, for the next file, we're hearing HMA 2241 for 132 Stanley Avenue in Hamilton. We have the agent, uh, James, registered to speak. We also had two interested parties, but I'm not able to find them. Um, perhaps they were, um, I'm not sure how they were added. Um, it was David Hendricks and Stephen DeWetter, um, but I don't see them. So that's more than interested. Okay. <laughs> oh, he's on there twice. You're right. Yeah, he's the owner. Yes. Okay, so if we cannot get a hold of the other instant party and they don't speak, at the very least, they should be sent a copy of the decision. Mm -hmm. Given our new environment of not getting through to people as often, that might be a good solution. But we can't get on board with Okay, Mr. Ling, are you there? I am. How are you? I'm good. Good. So just so you know, the good news is that David lives in the house. So don't worry about him. Neither one of them could uh, make it today. So David and Stephen live in the same house. So Okay, so there's no opposition that the interested parties got. Now, you've read the comments, I'm assuming, as normal. Are you okay with what you've read? Uh, the only thing uh, I noticed on there, and I don't know how it, it didn't get mentioned, but we do technically have one parking spot out front. So I, I think it says that we don't have any, but... Either way, I don't think there was any opposition to that. Okay, so as staff Hi, support, do we have a motion for approval of variances? Bob? So Bob and Nancy. Nancy, all in favor? Opposed, if any? Carried. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's all go to the Dairy Queen. Okay, so, so if we just hold on for a minute. Okay. Okay, so everybody's ready. We're hearing HMA 2242 for 415 Main Street West in Hamilton. And we had the agent registered to speak as well as several interested parties. Um, we did have the agent request to speak first. Okay, and who is the agent? Name, please. Hi there. My name is Martin Parkinpoom from Western Consulting. I'm here on behalf of the owners of 415 Main Street. Um, I would like to formally request a deferral of this application. Um, I sent in an email to um, uh, Jamila yesterday afternoon uh, requesting a deferral. Um, as a bit of background, um, we met with planning staff early Tuesday morning to go over uh, their comments on our application and at which time we were advised they had come uh, to that. We issued revised drawings for their review yesterday morning. And then following that, we're, we were advised that there would not be enough time for planning staff to review the material and suggested that we uh, re defer or table our application until they've had a, a chance to review that material. Um, and I, within the last few hours of today, I coordinated a meeting with planning staff for next week, um, which we should be able to review the materials and hopefully come to an understanding of some of the variances that we requested and the change that we've made to reduce the extent and the number of those variances in totality 
Uh, so with that, uh, I'm requesting that the committee grant a, a deferral and table this application until the next available meeting in the new year. Okay, so uh, Jamila, the, for the people that have sent letters and that are here today, should this be recirculated once this is all changed or do you have it in your ability to notify everyone that gave a letter or came in today to be notified when the next hearing is done? And then hopefully there'll be less variances or less concerns based on everything that we had received today. Yes. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I will. We will be able to send um, either an email with the new hearing date or a physical mail uh, with the new hearing date and any proposed changes to the minor variances to all those who have uh, submitted written comments and who have uh, uh, registered to speak here today as well. Um, once a new hearing date is assigned to the file. Okay, so I'll take a motion for deferral. I have Second Nancy it. and Dale. Okay, all in favor? Okay, carried. Motion to, or the application is tabled slash deferred. Uh, we'll be notified when there's a new hearing in whatever form it may be. And for Martin, I could probably suggest in addition to speaking with the um, staff, you might want to look at some of the letters and perhaps address some of the concerns in the letters pre prior to the next application. That might be a good idea. For you, Mr. Chair, we did have a, an open house with um, the neighbors um, voluntarily last week where we presented our application and okay. received some of that feedback, which we spoke with the councillor on as well. Fantastic. Okay, hearings adjourned and we'll see you sometime next year. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Wow. <laughs> a lot of big girls. A lot of big ones today. Yes. So that's it for this year? Yes. So um, yeah. if you just give me one minute. Actually, I have to ask oh, you she's gonna. She's going to hand out our Christmas I, bonuses. I, 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 my love to um, Christmas. Are you giving Christmas bonuses today? Am I allowed to say Merry Christmas okay. nowadays? <laughs> yes, I, I you believe need, so. You don't need <laughs> shopping money. <laughs> yes, so I believe we've got um, up to, so those who had submitted forms, so not everybody has still submitted all of their forms, but those that we did receive. Oh my God. Um, I mine? <laughs> yes, yes, we have those. So those are being submitted. So there's another batch that we got um, in the last week, I'd say, two, week and a half, I guess. Um, and so those ones will be um, uh, sent uh, out shortly, I believe. <laughs> um, not very many so, days left in the year. No, no, there's not. Um, so yeah, so those ones I believe are being uh, sent out shortly. And um, so I, I do apologize for the delay with those. There was some miscommunication between our sections. We thought they were submitted and apparently they weren't. Um, so yeah, so the, the remaining ones that we have received, we will, and we will be working on um, another list. I believe we had sent out a list sometime in, September or October with um, outstanding ones. So we will be sending one out um, in the next week um, as well. And what about the ones that were lost? Hopefully you got that sorted. Yes, yes. So the ones that okay. you had submitted and uh, David had also, um, we had those ones. So those ones are being sent out today. Well, so they're being sent to our finance person today and usually they're out um, within, I would say a week is generally uh, when they're, uh, wow. the actual cool. stuff is sent out. So yeah. Okay. Have you, Jamil? Uh, so we've got yours, but I don't think we got your November one. So they might no, just be November, coming in. November, December will be coming in. They'll be shipping it out tomorrow. They got it. Oh, okay. 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 That's, uh, so that's fine. Should, since this is the last meeting of the year, do you want the December? Well, that's kind of too late now too, but it would make better sense if you had the December forms to make it a year end. Yeah, so we will, um, so we'll send out the one batch today of the ones that we already did get and then the ones that we receive for the rest of the year because we'll send out another batch because we'll hopefully get the rest of the ones that we're missing from um, a couple of people. So, and then we should be, I'm hoping to get everything sorted by 
what's the date? The 15th? I think it was the, the, the middle of the 11th, next, next Friday. So we should have everything sorted, provided we get everything. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so we'll send out, we'll be sending out another batch next week once we get the, okay. the December ones from everybody too. Cool. So I noticed that it's a good point that we can get our money soon because it looks like David's in a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, you got me. <laughs> You're good, Dale, but I'm in Nova Scotia. Huh? It was a coffee machine to give it away. <laughs> I'm a traveler. But you know what? I still made it to the meeting. <laughs>